So uh, interestingly, this land uh, spring is very busy. So weeds, because we've had so much rain, we're almost taller than me. And uh, I've been plucking. So the long weekend, what's the long weekend all about? Gardening? Yeah, I'm way behind in gardening with all the rain. So uh, if you're coming out here to use the property, again, I want to make some notes here. Some people have said, hey, Brenna, I'd love to come out. I'm so excited about the new property. But I don't have the funds right now and that's a okay it doesn't mean you're excluded if you want to come use the property and walk the labyrinth um, because the labyrinth has its own healing qualities and what a labyrinth is is it's like a one-way maze well it's not really a maze but it's a one-way um, circuit into the middle and then you walk the same way out it's so cute my mother seems to get lost doing it all the time but it's one way in, same way out. <laughs> I just laugh as I watch her get all confused. It's not confusing. But um, when you're walking into a labyrinth, it's, it, it's, it has its own healing qualities. So I always feel like everything that I'm ready to release, kind of like before a uh, session, comes to the surface and it feels really icky. And as you're walking through, you can just walk mindlessly through because you're just following the path um you're just kind of walking through at your own pace it's almost like everything starts to lift now when i get to the middle assuming it's nice dry grass i'll lay on my back and look at the sky but sometimes when i do it in the morning it's dewy and wet so i'll just stand up and uh you know just close my eyes sometimes i'm in the labyrinth for a long time sometimes i'm out i come out quickly sometimes i cry in there something's bubbling up sometimes i laugh hysterically and sometimes i just look at everything and everything just looks so extra um enlightened like you know the birds and the leaves and it's like wow you know and i just get in this state of wow uh, so if you're in the area and you want to walk the labyrinth, just shoot me a text. The The reason that I, I invite people to the property is for a few reasons. One, if you're like me who lived in the city, I grew up a city girl, I love the city, but deep down I love the country and I love being outside and I love the outdoors. So a lot of us crave the outdoors, but it's not easy to get to. And um, I find where this place is close to Lake Erie, there's this uh, nice vibration about it. And it's just like, it's just quiet. You're disconnected and you can reconnect with yourself and just really break out of the hustle and the bustle and the talking and the social aspects. Don't get me wrong. I like being social. I, a lot of you can tell I love talking and I've been calling out a lot of people. And if I have missed you, it's not that I've missed you. A, I probably don't have your phone number, so I can't call you out. Or B, a, you're on a list and I'm going to call you out. If you are somebody who's never had a session with me and you want to talk with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, give me an email and say, hey, I would love a quick chat and here's my phone number. Otherwise, I'm trying to send out personalized emails. It all takes very long because when I get on some calls, sometimes I am a bit too chatty and the day just goes like very quickly. So that's happening. If you're in the area um, and you want to use a labyrinth, let me know and, and I'll, I'll arrange it for you. There was a one uh, client of mine, I think actually she's never been a client of mine. She was just someone who did the calls. And she says, I'm on Rainham Road. Me and my husband are driving and it seems like something familiar. Isn't your place on Rainham Road? I said, yep. Yeah. And she goes, do you mind if we come by? So I was driving my tractor, cutting the grass. I'm like, sure, come on. Then they were like two minutes away. So they actually saw me on my tractor and uh, I let them walk the labyrinth. And, you know, I'd love to share the property with anybody who feels compelled to come by. All right. Um, if you want an actual session while you're here, please make an appointment because I might be busy. But if you just want to like walk the grounds on your own, that is something that can uh, easily be done. Uh, for those of you out of town, I might do a labyrinth walk uh, by virtual one day if anybody wants to join. I think that will be a lot of fun. I might do it live where I'll walk the labyrinth one evening live and um, the energy is just going to go through and it'll feel great. Or maybe I'll just record it and uh, 
send it out but i'm thinking a live one might be fun you know um and to have a group meditation live outside maybe one of our tuesday nights will be a walk in the labyrinth you never know there's endless possibilities and lots of fun out there i'm having these great ideas every day some i think are great and i tell someone like no Bruno, that is not a good idea like seriously it feels so good to me so generally when I have something peeking up inside, something that I get really excited about, I don't tell anyone. Um, sometimes it's best not to tell anyone because they might knock you off your seat and say, no, that's not a great idea. And uh, it's even things like I'm making a career change. I'm going to quit my job and start something totally new. Well, if you tell your family that or your parents that or your friends that they're like, are you crazy? Don't do that. You know, you have the security here and what happens if you just let everything go and it fails. And so when you have these little seeds of excitement that are inside, it's best, I always think, to keep them kind of like your little secret for a bit and um, maybe tell people that you know that would be 100% for you. But other than that, just keep it secret until you are really solid in your knowing this is what I'm going to do. Because when you really focus on something and it feels good to you, other people may not understand it. And um, like, for instance, what would I do for a living? Who would have ever thought a corporate girl would change to this? If I ever, you know, you know, I know when I told my parents, they said, "Uh, uh-uh, just stay in your job, work your job, do this. And it makes sense because But I didn't just jump and do it. It was kind of a very gradual slow because I too had some hesitancy. How am I going to pay my bills if I'm doing this? Things like that, right? So that call in your heart is interesting. And I use the word interesting a lot because this world is interesting. I love to wonder about everything. What I've noticed is where we are is really perfect and evolving. And I used to say that, but I never really, 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 really understood it. But I've been very reflective nowadays and I have time when I'm weeding or I'm going to the labyrinth or I'm just sitting. There's so much to do here. So I have a lot of alone time where I just kind of sit and think. How much of our life is already predetermined? And then, yes, we have free will. So it kind of gets complicated. But I believe that, and this is, again, this is what I resonate with. So. Just because I resonate with it doesn't mean I'm saying you must think the same way. I'm just putting it out there based on what I've seen, what I've experienced, and what I see in others. Um, Okay, one thing, a disclaimer, I now, although I wasn't brought up believing in past lives, I now believe in past lives. There's a lot of things that don't make sense to me without that being something that I believe in. So with that, if I'm coming down in this lifetime as Brenda Ferrugia, and I'm choosing my parents and I'm choosing my country and I'm choosing, I'm choosing a lot of things. So I'm making contracts with a bunch of people or souls that I've had contracts or known in other lives. And usually I think there's about 2000 people that are in our lives that we've probably had in other lifetimes playing different roles and different experiences. So we write this contract and in my contract, I blah, 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 blah. Now I come here, my free will was writing the contract. So now I've come here with my my contract in place, who I'm going to meet, what experiences we're going to have, who's gonna be my brother and sister, who's gonna be this and that and all these experiences. So you go through life and you meet people that you just love right away. You're just like, oh, I know this person. I just feel like they're home. Then you meet other people like, why is this person in my life? All they do is piss me off. Contract, contract, contract. Some contracts are good, meaning they make us feel good. Other contracts don't make us feel good, but they are good because they're learning lessons. So when you start to look at things that is a broader picture, every human being on this planet, no matter what role you're playing, no matter who you are, you've come into this planet with some sort of lessons. Maybe it's to run a mission to help humanity. Maybe it is to learn self-love. Maybe it is to learn um, how to be more compassionate. Um, I have worked with some lady recently 
who in this lifetime, she is uneducated. She feels she's not very smart. She's a housewife, but it came not from me. It came from somebody else when they were doing some past life that she was a, uh, a snobby, um, rich woman in a past life and her karma was to play the other side of it because she really looked down upon housewives and women that stayed home and she's like well if that was something I'm learning then haven't I learned my lesson yet can't I snap out of it this lifetime I believe in this new energy we're in we can now drop our karma and karma is really just cause and effect so if I do this, this, and this, this happens, and now I'm gonna play this part to correct that. It's more about learning. It's not about punishment, I don't think. It's more about this is what I came to learn. Now I can raise my hand and say, in this lifetime, wow, I came to learn self-love. Even though I could give and give and give, I couldn't give to myself. So all those years i thought i was leading a great life giving and giving and giving not caring about myself well what happened is during my my journey which has been long what i've been learning is about self-love and how to be prudent and discerning you know i can still be giving but i have to be careful i just can't give it to everyone i'm not going to give it to someone who's taking advantage of me constantly or things like that so now let's say i learned my lesson and i'm at this phase in my life where i have learned my lesson and i still can give love and i can hold these things and do all this stuff but i'm not going to be a doormat something i learned right so now i have this whole history of years where I was a doormat. I let people do mean things to me and I didn't do anything about it. So all that time, I wasn't being nice to me. In that case, that is still some type of learning that I have to, like the history has to come up for healing. So then now I might be making better decisions for myself going forward but there's still these ups and downs that I'm living right now as the history that I created where I left myself out of the love is coming up for healing. So, you know, sometimes when people make comments or, 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 or you know, it, it's not, I don't really, really care about um, what people think, but I did. And it used to hurt when I was someone, but you did this and you let this person do this to you and you let this and then they took that. I'm just like, yeah i i did and i was in a i was a different person i was under a program i was missing self-love so why am i gonna sit here and dwell or just relive my past when i can create this beautiful future so when we regret something when we're embarrassed about all that is is an indicator that you have grown so take that indicator, embrace it, forgive yourself, forgive your past and create a great future. Don't dwell in regret, embarrassment, shame. I should have did this. I'm a victim of this planet and everything crappy happens to me. Because if you stay there, that lower energy is going to have you repeat it, stay in it. You're not going to move forward. So there's this awareness that, hey, I am embarrassed about that I let people treat me like a doormat, that I never stood up for myself, that I never stood up for this and that. Yeah, it, sure, that version of Brenda or that version of you was that version. But as we learn and grow and we evolve, this is the new version. You're not going to go back to that old version. So why put that energy back into that old stuff? You know, I hear this from a lot of people, but my mom said this to me. My mom always said I wasn't good enough. My mom said I shouldn't go to a party because I wasn't pretty enough. My mom said this, my dad said this, my parents did this, my brother did that. I get it. You know, this is, a, this is duality on planet Earth. Sometimes we don't have the best family members and that, that information that comes into us is like very uncomfortable, but it stays in there. But are you going to give your entire life replaying something that somebody said years ago when you were a child because 
it's in it's in your cell memory now how do we break that so calls like this go to that cell memory and start to really release it but if there's parts of us that are ready to heal parts of us that heal just by our higher self is healing but sometimes we have to actively learn the lesson so even though in a call like this what's happening is there's a lot of energy um uh energy pattern energetic patterns negative thought patterns a lot of this stuff is getting ready to leave why does that layer leave so easily in these calls is because you've learned the lesson it's no longer serving and your soul your higher self knows you're ready to let it go so you can move up to the next level now if you have a pattern and you're still replaying this pattern and how many of us have patterns you can think about it what part of my life do i still have why do i still have this pattern it's because you haven't fully learned the lesson of the pattern you haven't fully acknowledged it now i got, got a little upset i remember seeing a pattern of mine totally acknowledging the pattern and it still stuck around so i kept saying what is it that i need to do to break the pattern you know, I've tried hypnosis, I tried energy work, I tried this, I tried that, I tried this, and I, I saw the pattern, but I know it's there. It's no longer a pattern now. It's a, it's it's almost a choice, but it wasn't a choice because it's something that it was almost repetitive. It was like habitual. Like well, if someone said A, I would always say B. If someone said A, so, and B wasn't the right answer. It's getting me in trouble. If someone said A, I should have said A. Let's say, but why did I knew I should be saying A, but I kept saying the wrong thing. Let's say. So why did that happen? Well, at some points, I didn't understand the lessons I had to learn. The 3D selves, ourselves, may not understand the lessons we need to learn, but your higher self knows the lesson you need to learn. So sitting quietly, really connecting to yourself and say, I have this pattern. You may wanna sit quietly and journal and write. I have the messiest handwriting nowadays because I don't write a lot, but I still like writing, even though it's, it's messy, no one's going to see it anyway, but, or you can think about it, but the thoughts may come really quick and you might lose the thoughts. So you want to record them somehow. Maybe you have your phone and you're going to text it or something to yourself, but ask yourself, why do I still have this pattern? Why is it this different faces, different experiences, but the same underlying tone is there? Oh, I get to this level of position at a job and I get let go. I get to this position of the, and I get let go. What is it that's holding me at this level? I'm too scared to go beyond it. Or why is it that I get this great relationship and all of a sudden the person turns on me? Like, what is it about that person? No, it's not about that person. It's about what am I admitting? What am I thinking? What am I expressing? What am I sending out? Or people say, oh, I quit my job. Great, because that place sucked. Then I just hear them, oh, I got this new job. Oh my gosh, you have to see. So-and-so is here, but it's like that, my old job. Different places, different faces, same undertone playing. Who's the issue? We are, we're not victims, we're creating. Now, why we create is very complicated. Why we create dysfunction in our life and chaos is very complicated but we won't get to that complication. We'll just say it could be due to a karmic loop. It could be to, to a trauma that happened to you as a child that's replaying. Maybe it's an abandonment thing. It could be a combination of many different things. So you don't really have to understand why you have a pattern. Although we wanna understand it, I know. You don't have to. You can hand it over to your higher self and say, hey, I got this pattern going on. I know it's there. I don't know how to break it. I don't know how to get rid of it. Show me a way that I can understand. Now, if anyone's stubborn like me, they need to show me many different ways. You know, someone will tell me just blatantly, oh, Brenda, I know what your issue is this, but I don't want to hear it. Maybe I'm not ready to hear it. Then someone else tells you, then you're getting an intuition of something. Then you might watch a movie and the movie is your life perfectly playing or a TV show. And like, okay, this is the universe. This is your soul telling you, hey, what we're giving you um, examples to help you figure out what it is. 
sometimes we just have a knowing what it is. So now I have a knowing what my issue is. How do I break it? You chip away at it layer by layer because there's these energetic patterns that are in your system. Now we're just talking about one pattern. Some of us have many different patterns, right? There's a lot happening in the subconscious mind. So I'm just saying, let's play with just one pattern right now. And when you have this one pattern, you can chip away at that energetic pattern every time it comes up. You can say things like affirmations, you can work on energy work. And what happens is it chips away at this pattern, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. How do you know the pattern's gone when you're no longer living it? How do you know when you're gonna get to the bottom of it, the root of it, the cause of it, the release of it? You just get there and you'll know you've got there. So some of us break patterns very quickly. Some of us have patterns and they keep showing up, not as strong, but they keep showing up and it's frustrating. So as we're going through this healing journey, yes, it can be frustrating. B, I want to speed it up. I get it. I've been there. And I love that I've been there because I can come to this side of it and say, you know what? Never give up on you. Just chip away. Affirmations are very very strong in this new energy it's saying that i have unstable internet give me a moment i'm going to keep talking um they you know we have very now i lost my thought just give me one second because I, I don't want to lose you guys today and i just have this feeling that i don't know though it should not it might just act weird here so just give me a sec okay i'm trying doing double back up here all right so when you have these energetic patterns and these patterns are doing okay and they're and they're playing in the background and you're trying to see them sometimes other people will see them before you see them sometimes you're seeing them and you're getting frustrated so this is where you have the patience and the love for yourself because i do believe based on what i've experience based on what I see clients experiencing is if you are really, really into working on you and you have free will, I could have not followed my path. I could have said, no, I'm going to work in corporate. I'm going to make my money. I'm going to live this decent life. And I don't care. I, I don't, this call my heart. I'm going to ignore it. I had that choice. I didn't have to do what I'm doing. But there's that pull in your heart that says, yes, and, and I have free will to do it, and you have free will to do it. So when you start working on yourself, your soul will say, okay, she's awake. She's getting it. Let's give her the next crumb, and the next crumb, and the next crumb. Now, should I have been here 10 years ago? I used to think that, and now I don't believe so. I believe all the crap or stuff or experiences that I went through were needed to get me where I am today. So could I've sped up this process? I personally don't think so. But again, this is what I resonate with based on my experience. Now let's say someone, I'm gonna say, because people will say, oh, but say if I'm five years behind and I was supposed to really awaken five years ago and I didn't. I think that if that's the case, I don't know if that is the case, but let's say that is the case. I think then once you awake, you're going to go through some acceleration of learning and changing and growing to get you where you're supposed to be. If we are supposed to be anywhere. Um, I don't believe we get it all done in this lifetime, but I think anything that we gain in this lifetime will be a benefit for us because the energy is new. So if we're breaking karmic loops and we're breaking patterns and we're getting more self-love and let's say we came to the bottom of the bottom and a lot of people on these calls are the ones that have gone through a lot and they're just, they want to heal quickly and they're just done with their, I mean, so many people will say this life has just been nothing but just crappy and, and I get that. But let's say you were born at the bottom of the bottom in this lifetime and probably in many lifetimes just these karmic loops. And now in this lifetime, you're doing all this work and you're working and you're working and you're raising your vibration and you're releasing that dense, dark energy that all humans have, replacing it with light, your light quotient's going up, better things are happening, you're becoming wiser, you're learning, all that good stuff. So now you leave this earth plane and we call it death, not really dying, 
but your your body's no longer ready to go on so you you, you die and or transition i like transition better and you transition here but i started here so in my next lifetime i come back here and that's only because we're in the new energy if we were in the old energy i would have started all over again i have to do it all over again and do it all over again and do it all over again but this energy this ascension process we're in as you shed all that stuff and bring in the light and actually apparently the more work you do your cells become more porous more light shines through you feel lighter although I, sometimes i don't feel that light but you feel lighter but think about it when you are excited when you have those those inspirations and you're just vibrating you, we do feel lighter right or compare it to when you're feeling depressed or heavy or tired and how heavy you feel that's because we have less light at that time so i guess there is a difference of feeling that lightness right and you're probably like lighting up and feeling great so in those cases we just work on yourself and work on yourself because in this new energy we the stuff that learning stuff that we let go we let go and you um, get into a better place i believe and i think that's why i work on myself almost every single day at least releasing something because hey it's always up for release and i don't know if that's just my higher self saying okay let's go let's go let's get rid of this maybe i'm one of those who's way behind because of all the bad choices i made and they just did this acceleration but maybe the acceleration was something that was going to happen so who really knows? I don't think anyone really knows. But what I do find kind of interesting, again, interesting, is how a good psychic, I'm not saying all psychics are great, but they're the really good ones that want you to excel and they give you that best possible, like, this is where I want to see you. This is where you're shining your light. I've been blessed to have those ones in my life and they would explain where I am nine years later, where I am now, they said nine years ago, where I would have never believed them because what they're talking about seemed like a fantasy land. So I'm like, wow, they saw that. So was it written in my, in my agreement? Was it written on my soul? Was it written like, how does it work? So it's kind of fascinating, right? And I don't think we know all the answers. I think there's that part of us that just has to know, trust and believe that where we are is perfect and evolving, that I'm going to do the best I can today. I'm going to love myself as much as possible. And when I make the wrong choices and when I do the wrong things, I'm going to get back up and try again. And, and that's all we can do and forgive ourselves and forgive others and show compassion and kindness to everyone we meet, including ourselves and never leave anything out in the darkness. Because if you leave a country out of the darkness, a situation that's happening in the world out in the darkness, a person you don't like in the darkness, then you're leaving everything out of divinity. Everything in creation is a part of God. Now, when something ugly is happening, yes, there's an absence of light in that area, but it's all still a creation of God. So everything can come back to unity. And that's what we're doing with the ascension process. It is a personal ascension as we come back to unity. And it is also a human conscious one. So it's 930 and we are going to go into our healing part, which is really, I think, one of the nicest parts of this. Because <sighs> the energy is already flowing. I'm already dizzy. Now, we're getting a lot of new people on the call. So I just want to give people a bit of idea of what they might feel. With these energy sessions, they are always guided by 100% true love and light. These are beings of light that may come through, but they love you and they work with your higher self and they want you to become that being that you were born to be. We're all born to be, we're all magnificent beings. So we want to shed some of that heaviness so our light can shine through. So you just get comfortable. There's nothing you have to do except just get comfortable and say, hey, I'm going to let this happen. Now, for those of you who really want to make take this to the next level, and I've had some people email me and saying, I did this and let's see what happens. You can ask your higher self because your higher self, your soul knows exactly where you're supposed to be. 
and you can say, hey, I'd like to take this healing to the next level. I want to have a quantum leap. I want to have a real big shift, something that I can really see. The downfall with that is if when we shift very quickly, we release a lot of dense energy and replace it with light, our bodies can get very tired, almost flu-like symptoms, sometimes rashes. So I always caution people, be careful from asking for a big shift. But if you're just someone who wants to come and get a really nice, nice lifting of energy that you no longer need, let's, let's say, hey, let's get rid of the next layer. That's a nice progression. We're getting rid of that next layer of dense energy, replacing it with light. And that's healing us at the physical, the emotional, the mental level. It gets rid of the negative chatter in the background. It gets rid of negative thoughts. It gets rid of self-doubt. It promotes self-confidence. It heals our body. It, it kind of balances our, our system. So everyone's going to get, you know, everyone says, oh, just balance my chakras. It doesn't work that way from my own knowledge. You're going to get whatever you need. You're going to get all your chakras balanced. You're going to get your meridian systems uh, working. You're going to get your energetic system filled with light and getting all that negativity out so you can be that really nice energy flowing, which promotes a lot of healing at different levels. Uh, we have something called our innate smart body. Our bodies know exactly what to do, how to heal. So that'll happen automatically. So just get out of the way, let it come through and just say whatever I'm ready for, I'm allowing. Drink lots of water afterwards. So if I lose you at the end, the one thing that I wanted to tell you last time was drink lots of water for the next four or five days, this energy can continue to work. So as you're drinking water, you're releasing toxins. So you're helping your body speed up in its, uh, in its healing. Any questions before we start? I'm gonna drink some water and I'll just monitor the chat box. Okay, no questions. So we're just going to begin. If you do have a question afterwards, feel free to uh, send it uh, to me by email or text. I may not get back to you right after this call, as I take some time after to kind of readjust, but um, I'll get back to you eventually. So here we go, everyone. We're going to play music. I'm going to play the music low, because sometimes I feel like I want to talk. And um, if I do, I don't want you to struggle. I'm going to not talk as much, but I always say that and I want to say something. So we're just going to go with the flow here. No, no right or wrong. Okay, I'm just going to get my music going. And if anyone's feeling dizzy, uh, dizziness can happen. It's just that you're kind of like lifting, so you're going to getting a little bit ungrounded. Women tend to go higher up faster than men, but that's just a generality. We want men to go up too, but they, they will. But if you're feeling dizzy, it's just part of the healing process. If you feel nauseous, that's kind of part of the healing process. If you're feeling anxiety or heaviness, that's part of it. We're all very different. So just be kind to yourself and know whatever's happening for you is okay. So as this dense energy gets pulled off the earth plane, you're getting replaced with love and light and you're gonna feel really light afterwards. During, not so much for some, but you might feel good and light during it as well. All right, everyone, let's go and get some healing done. I'm gonna share my screen so you can hear the music better. And uh, I'm gonna ask somebody
check done? Yes, we're good now? Okay, all right. If I talk, I'll talk at this level so I don't. Uh, okay, so right now, just get comfortable and you're going to allow a deep breath. And this deep breath can be at any pace that you're comfortable with. But when you take that deep breath, fill your tummy with expanding. And then exhaling, your tummy's going in. Allow a few deep breaths, bringing relaxation into the body, bringing love and light into the cells. And if you're moving around, if there's any tension in your knees or your shoulders, you may just want to you know, move them around just to bring in that energy, releasing that tension, releasing the anxiety. Now, some of us might be feeling like we're releasing, like you may feel like you need to burp or yawn or um, you have anxiety filling up. Just allow it to go. Just breathe it out. As you're breathing at your own pain, you have your eyes closed. If you fall asleep, that's more than okay. You have this beautiful team of white beings that are balancing your chakra. Right. 
so if you're not paying attention, just enjoying the feeling, the feeling of the basket is happening automatically. So you have these beautiful beings of light that are supporting you and helping you heal. So if you're not really continuing just in a different way every cell of your body is being just illuminated with this beautiful loving light and it's getting exactly what it needs at this time and as that's happening Continuing, now make a special attention to anyone you might be concerned about, any event you might be concerned about. Send it love. You don't have to explain the problem. You don't have to repeat the problem. These beings of light know exactly what needs to go at this time. But you can send a name someone that you love and you're concerned for at this time. You can say it out loud, you can say it in your head, it doesn't matter. Yeah. 
fears or fears or arguments or hostility. Just have it. Imagine waves of light just weaving through this beautiful planet, through our essence, through the essence of our loved ones. Bringing us into clarity and peace and love and joy. Abundance, 
into an allowing state, a knowing state that I'm good enough, I deserve to heal, I deserve to be loved.
of love that we need, feelings of security, safety, calmness, and peace. You can add whatever you want to in this level of protection. Just beautiful. And this bubble of liquid love is always with you. help bring us back to a little more grounding. It's going to help clear our field a bit quicker. So at this point, it has come to an end. Beautiful energy. Thank you for joining everyone. That was lovely. I actually just had this like wave of last bit that just tingled through my body, made me extremely hot. Now I'm leveling back out again. Whew. 
So if you feel dizzy after this and you want to, you have things to do, you can ground yourself by stomping your feet on the ground, moving your body, drinking water. But if you want, you can just stay in that zen, fall asleep, and allow that energy. The energy is going to work on you whether you stay asleep or do whatever you need to do. It's just when we're staying in that thing, you might feel it more. But even when you don't feel it, you're working, they're going to work on you for about three, four days, maybe even five. Drink lots of water again. They need that energy, the water, they need the water for the energy to work. It also then eliminates any toxins that you need to release at this time. So it can promote a lot of healing. If anyone has any questions, again, just reach out. But I think that's it. If there's any questions, I can answer in the chat box. Other than that, we'll call it a night. It's 10.04 in uh, Eastern Standard Time, so it's a bit late. And uh, sleep well, everyone. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. Oh, the next one, I think we have a one week off. And um, we will be back on the June 6th at 9 p.m. All right, everyone. Have a good night. Oh, Noel, Noria, and lots of nice familiar names. Actually, I, I'm going through the, the list, and there's a lot of new faces and a lot of uh, regulars. So thank you, everyone, for joining. You're, uh... <laughs> Bye. All right, good night, everyone. Good night. I'm going to stop the recording.